Hello, this is Brad with Analysis. In this video, we're going to look at the top conversion tracking mistakes and how to fix them. So when you think of conversions, this data is easy to set up and it informs Google Ads how to do bidding. It tells you what search terms to be negative keywords. It informs your ad testing data and so forth. So a couple mistakes in conversion tracking can have massive implications to your bids being wrong to other poor decisions being made. So when we go to the conversion action section of our account, we can see all the conversions, our source, category, attribution, etc. It's a nice overview. When we click into an individual action, we have different options to look at. So our number one mistake is not using values for conversions. If you're e-commerce, then of course you'd want to use the actual checkout value. But if you're doing lead gen and you have some conversions, that have low value and others with high value, you can just use a point value system. So our next biggest mistake is the count. If you're lead generation and you're tracking form fills, phone calls, white paper downloads, and you have every turned on, that means if one person fills out your form 10 times, they count as 10 conversions. So if you only want uniques, your count should be one. If you're e-commerce, then you may use every, because of course, every time someone checks out, you make more money. Next, we have included in conversion column. This is a very important one. If you include the conversion in the conversions column, it will be used for automated bidding. For most third-party systems, such as Adalysis, we only pull in what's pulled in your conversion column. So you may have other things being tracked, such as page views, time on site, etc. And those actions will show up in the all conversions. The conversion column is the most important one because this is where all the bid decisions, ad testing decisions, etc. come from. So next we have not choosing an attribution model or being inconsistent in attribution models. So by default we have last click. If you have a lot of conversions, you could use data driven or you can use time decay, position based, etc. Now where this really comes into play of thinking about your attribution models is when we go back to all of our conversions and we say who's being included in conversions and we have one that's time decay, another last click, another position based. This is going to cause a problem because if you really want everything time decay but there's a last click in here or you want everything position based but there's a time decay in here the data gets really messy and bad bids are made for your account. Your conversion data is not put correctly across all your data. So often when we look at our overview, we're saying, are we consistent on our attribution? Are we consistent on our accounts? Now, you may have some that are different. You might have, this one is a count of every, because we're e-commerce, but we want to count catalog leads. So therefore, we're going to count those as one, but e-commerce is every. There, there are exceptions. And then do we have some that have different conversion values? So it's important to be consistent. Our next biggest thing to look at with mistakes in conversion tracking is how you choose to handle local actions. Is a website visit a conversion that you want Google to optimize for? What about driving directions? Store visits is often one that is included. So when there are other conversions that are being added to your account, have you thought about how you want to have them included? Many people don't want driving directions included. They'd rather just use store visits. Our click-through conversion window is how long a user has to convert after clicking an ad. If these are inconsistent, that can also lead to inconsistent decisions by a bid system, ad testing, etc. So consistency. If you're using the call extension, those are also automatically included with a count of every, which is often not what you want. Now, in your settings, you can choose the call length for what you want counted as a conversion. So you could say, well, only if the call is at least 30 seconds or 60 seconds do I want to count it as a conversion. So leaving it as any call is usually a mistake and thinking about when someone calls you, what's a successful call look like and how long does that take? That's an important one, and that can be your seconds. Another mistake is tracking conversions on the website that never make it to Google Ads. 
So the, the most common issues with this are phone call tracking, where someone tracks phone calls and they put it into Google Analytics or they put it into Adobe. And in those cases, if they're not being put into Google Ads, you can't make decisions on them. You can either do an import from Google, which is easy to do right within the system, or for a third party systems, you can do offline import. These are the most common problems with the conversion actions themselves. We have a bonus one, conversion action sets. So conversion action sets lets you bundle conversion types together. We can go in and we can say, count these different conversions as a set. Now what's nice about this is then we can go into a campaign and we can say, let's use these sets, right? these tracked conversions for this campaign and let's use a different set for a different campaign. This can be useful when you've got some sets that are awareness, uh, top of funnel, maybe just some discovery ads, and you're really focused on time of site metrics. But then you've got your search ads and your remarketing ads, and you expect them to convert. So in those cases, you want to focus purely on who converted the lead information and not just a good visit. So when we look at the conversion action sets, we're often looking to see how many campaigns are they used in? And do they have different conversions being used in different campaigns? Because if you have four or five conversion action sets and one is being used in one set of search campaigns and a different one is being used in a different set of search campaigns, that may lead to an inconsistency issue and you need to examine that very, very closely. So with conversion actions, our number one thing we're looking at is consistency. Right, consistency in the attribution, consistency often in the counts. There could be some exceptions here. Consistency in the click-through window, and then ensuring only conversions that should be used for bidding, ad testing, search query data, etc., are in the conversion column. Because it's important in systems like analysis, we use counted conversions for automated ad testing, automated analysis, etc. So we're going to look at what's in the yes column how that data has been divvied up, and then give automated recommendations based upon that information. So the takeaway from this video is number one, make sure you understand what these conversions mean. Number two, be consistent. Number three, double check any conversion action sets and other values or conversions not being imported. And if you can get through those three things, then you should have great conversion data making all your optimization efforts much more efficient.